Hi, my name is Don Bolt, and welcome to the 10 Minute Parent. Uh, in the 10 Minute Parent, uh, what you'll be learning is biblical parenting, uh, which uh, gives the opportunity to understand what is it that God told us uh, about how to raise our children, and then how to practically apply that uh, to the way that we raise our children. Uh, this is a series of videos, and uh, we're starting a new section uh, in this one. So this is number one, uh, the, uh, the introduction to the section, which is about control and influence uh, in raising your children. Uh, and I want to begin by saying many thanks to J. Richard Fugit, uh, from whom I learned the, the concept which became the basis for this teaching a long, long time ago. So, so let's get on uh, with this and, and start to talk about control and influence. There's a scripture, and uh, it's a very important one, because uh, it's one where, uh, in the book of Ephesians, in chapter 6, uh, Paul is uh, bringing back uh, into focus uh, the relationship between parents and children. He tells children that they're to obey their parents and that this is pleasing to God, okay? And so, uh, but then he goes on to, to say something rather intriguing about how it is that we're supposed to raise our children, okay? Because he says that, uh, that this fifth commandment where it says, honor your father and your mother is the first commandment with a promise that it may be well with you. And of course, we want it to be well with our children, all right? As they grow up, as they become adults, uh, we want them to be launched successfully in life. And so, uh, you know, to understand, for them to honor us and obey us uh, when they're children uh, is, is a very, very important uh, part of their life, very important part of their upbringing. So then he goes over and he says this uh, very, very important little phrase. And he says to fathers, you know, he says, look, don't provoke your children to wrath. In other words, don't exasperate your children. Uh, because uh, there's this uh, teaching that, that's here about that, you know, when we become angry with our children, all right, what we tend to do is reproduce our anger in them. If we become exasperated with them, we exasperate them. There's this tendency to, to reproduce in our children the things that are going on in us. But then he says that we're do something else instead. Because I don't know if you've ever felt this way, but oh, you know, you're just at this place where you're exasperated with your children and you're, and you're thinking, oh, you know, and, and you're at this place where it just seems reasonable that the thing I should do is become angry with them and, and scare them into obedience. Well, the problem with that is that it only works for a few years, and then you find yourself with uh, children that are no longer frightened of you, uh, and uh, or frankly, that the things you have to do to frighten them start becoming illegal. All right, so I mean, a little bit of humor there. So, anyways, but the uh, but so what does he recommend instead? He says no, but he says instead do something. All right, and I just let me just it's it's simple, but he says bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Okay, uh, if you read in, in the King James, that's nurture and admonition. All right, and so there's these two things, he says, that the nurture and the admonition, not of ourselves, but the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, that we're to bring them up in this. All right, let me start off by just saying that uh, there's plenty of things in this world that are going to bring your children down. You know, they will have friends that will bring them down. They'll have experiences that bring them down, you know, all kinds of things uh, that can bring them down. Your responsibility is to bring them up, to, to elevate them uh, to a place where they step into a mature adulthood. And that's your responsibility. So what are your tools, all right? And that's what we're going to talk about in this whole uh, sec section. And this is the introduction, like I said, to that, all right? The two that you have are, okay, discipline and instruction. We're going to call them control and influence uh, in this teaching, okay, just for, for clarity uh, so that you can understand how these things then are applied. Because this word discipline, all right, in the original language basically meant to control your child. Uh, it covered everything from, you know, chasing them around and, and trying to direct them with your hands. It, it basically meant to use your hands to direct your children. And it covered everything from that to, you know, the occasional need for a, a spanking uh, as being, you know, control, okay, that it was the, that was the first thing I was supposed to do. I was supposed to discipline my children uh, into a particular place as I was raising them. Then you have this other thing, which is this, this one here that uh, it, it says instruction. Uh, the, uh, I like the King James on that one. It says admonition. But what it is is this. It's the, the second tool that you have is to direct them with the word of your mouth. All right? And so uh, to understand when your children are little, the most effective means of, of directing them is by getting out there with your hands uh, and making them be obedient. As they grow older, that becomes less effective. and you want to be in the place where when you speak your word carries authority with your child. So let's start to put this into a nice clear understandable uh, package for you here. All right, I want you to imagine that on the wall behind me is a chart. Okay, we don't have a chart today but we're going to draw one in your heart here for a minute. And 
what I want you to do is just, just like a nice little graph, okay? And down the side here, uh, you're going to see that there are degrees of uh, these things. And across here is time, all right? And what I want you to understand is if we go down to this corner, we go to the day of your child's birth, all right? And what I want you to understand is on that day, you had amazing control over your child. They never went anywhere you didn't want them to go. They didn't say anything you didn't want them to say or eat anything you didn't want them to eat. You were in control. All right, now you might have wondered how much control you were in about 3 in the morning when they wanted to be fed. But, uh, but nonetheless, to just uh, follow with me on this, that you had a great deal of control at that time. All right, and, uh, but influence... I mean, let's face it, if you try to, hey, honey, so it's okay, it's okay, and they don't listen, all right, because they don't respond to uh, the word of your mouth just yet. You aren't giving any direction at all. Well, but what I want you to understand is you have no influence, great control, but over the course of time, and if you just picture these lines kind of, go, you know, control dropping and influence, hopefully, if, you, if you'll follow some direction from the word of God, increasing over the course of time, uh, what happens is somewhere around age 12, those lines cross, and what happens is that if you have not become your child's leader, the person whose word they listen to, by the time they're about age 12, you're going to have nothing pretty quick. I mean, by the time they're 18, 20 you know, years old, I mean, you have nothing, all right? Because they don't listen to your word, you're no longer in control, you have nothing, and that's a miserable place to be. Okay, so we're going to take some time and look at effective means of controlling uh, your young children and uh, effective means of arriving at that place where you would be the leader to that child as they go into their later years. And we'll be doing those in the sessions that follow. So uh, we'll be looking forward to having you back in, uh, in our next section, uh, section number two on control and influence.